There's a lot more to do in Prague than just see its castle or astronomical clock. And in this video, I'll be sharing the best things to do in this amazing city, along with tourist traps to avoid. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Christina from happytowander.com, and this channel is all about practical travel advice from someone who's been there, done that. So be sure to like and subscribe if that sounds like your kind of thing, and be sure to stick around until the end for a free map that has everything from this video pinned for your convenience. Now let's start off our list with an obvious one, and that's to wander through Prague's Old Town, the most beautiful and also the most crowded and touristy part of the city. The most famous square to visit here is the aptly named Old Town Square, a nice place to start your sightseeing tour, especially first thing in the morning because it can get so busy here. One highlight is a visit to the imposing Old Town Hall building, which you can explore with a tour or through a climb to the top, where you can drool over amazing views of Prague. There's also a few churches to see here as well, including the iconic Teen Cathedral and St. Nicholas Church. Plus the city's famous astronomical clock, the oldest functioning one in the world, originally placed here in the year 1410. This clock is definitely beautiful, though it's always packed at the hourly mark because of the free show featuring moving figures that takes place. I say to not get your hopes up for this because it's honestly very short and not the most exciting show. But the clock itself is definitely worth seeing. Now while the square is very nice to admire, do beware that this is tourist central when it comes to Prague, so there are a lot of potential traps to avoid including the street food vendors that show prices here based on 100 gram servings, making it very easy to overpay by accident depending on the quantity that they serve you. I would personally avoid eating here. Speaking of places to avoid, the infamous Karlova Street in Old Town is also well known for its concentration of tourist traps and tacky absinthe shops, so best not to spend too much time there either. In spite of these less desirable parts though, there's no denying that Prague's Old Town is a beautiful place to wander through. Some highlights for me include the Jewish Quarter, home to a number of beautiful synagogues that you can access with just a single ticket, including the stunning Spanish Synagogue and the Old New Synagogue, which is actually the oldest functioning one in Europe. There's also the distinctive Powder Tower, which was completed in 1475, named for its previous function as a gunpowder store, though today it's mainly a photo op and viewing platform. As well as the House of the Black Madonna, a beautiful cubist building that's home to a swanky cafe, a museum, and a cool stairwell shaped like a light bulb. Another cool spot is the Clementinum, home to one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. Though sadly, you can only admire it from afar as visitors aren't allowed to step foot inside. And to be honest, you don't really get to see a lot. The views here are nice though, but be sure to book in advance as this is a very popular spot. Speaking of libraries, at the Municipal Library of Prague, there's another hidden gem turned viral hotspot. This infinite book tower made of over 8,000 books. While it's free to see, I should warn you that mirrors are cleverly used to get this cool infinity effect, so there aren't really as many books as you might expect. All to say, there is plenty to see in Old Town, so be sure to take some time to explore it properly. Next, there's the world-famous Charles Bridge, a stunning 14th century stone bridge lined with 75 statues. From here, you can see some of the city's most iconic views, as well as plenty of artists, musicians, and your fellow tourists. Inevitably, you'll cross this bridge when in Prague, but getting here early is key to enjoying it properly without crowds. There's also the Old Town Bridge Tower here, which offers some really beautiful views, but honestly, it gets so crowded that I can't really recommend it at busy times like sunset, which is when I went. Especially since you're practically stepping over people and there's not much space to walk. Alternatively, there is a similar tower on the other side of the bridge, where you'll find the Lesser Town Bridge Towers, with one offering its own viewing platform. 
Now, once we get across the bridge, we approach our next top thing to do in Prague, which is to visit Prague Castle. Known as the world's largest castle complex, this massive attraction dates back to the 9th century, serving as the seat of power for the kings of Bohemia once upon a time. And today, it is still the official residence of the Czech president, as well as a major tourist attraction, with a number of big landmarks, including the St. Vitus Cathedral, which you can climb up for some of the highest and most dizzying views of the city. There's also the Royal Palace here and Golden Lane, known for its picturesque, colorful houses. To be honest, if crowds aren't your thing and you're tight on time, I wouldn't necessarily prioritize spending a lot of time here because there are so many other cool things to do in Prague, including another castle complex in Prague that gets a fraction of the crowds. But we'll discuss that one a little bit later. First though, let's discuss another must-do near Prague Castle, and that's to explore the Malastrama, or the Lesser Town, home to tons of pretty streets and nice views, especially along the river. Main sites here include Kampa Island, which is home to one of Prague's most photographed attractions, the John Lennon Wall. Once a symbol of youth rebellion against the Czech communist regime, and today a canvas for messages of hope and peace from around the world. It gets very, very busy here, so I'd recommend coming early in the morning, and I should stress that it is the most fun if you get to leave your own mark too. Plus, don't forget to have a little walk around the rest of Kampa Island. It's small, compact, and very pretty. You might even stumble upon some of Prague's most bizarre pieces of public art, these crawling babies. One of the many quirky public art pieces in the city, which I'll be pinning on my free map. Now, speaking of this free map, this week's video is sponsored by Airlo, my go-to eSIM provider that provides instant and affordable connectivity for over 200 countries and regions. For those new to the concept, eSIM stands for Embedded SIM, which means it's pre-installed on your device and works 100% digitally to connect you with your telecom provider's network, meaning instant data access upon arrival without needing to switch physical SIM cards in and out. Best of all, it's actually cheaper than roaming. eSIMs work especially well if you need coverage across multiple destinations, thanks to Airlo's regional SIMs, which work across multiple countries. Data is more important than ever these days in big cities like Prague, where you'll need it for navigation, translation, and booking tickets on the go. Luckily, Airlo eSIMs make the process super quick and easy. If you need a full tutorial for setup, you can check out my complete Airlo guide for step-by-step -step instructions, and be sure to scan this QR code for a link to download the app. This code here will also get you a discount. Thanks again to Airlo for sponsoring this week's video. Now, elsewhere in the Malastrana, you'll find some cool churches like St. Nicholas Church, which is known for its beautiful frescoes, and the Church of Our Lady Victorious famous for housing the Infant Jesus of Prague statuette, which has its own little wardrobe of outfits that you can see in the unique museum of the Infant Jesus. Definitely a quirkier Prague attraction, but worth a look if you're in the area. There's a number of pretty gardens to explore in this neighborhood as well, including the free Wallenstein Garden, as well as paint options like the romantic palace gardens just beneath the castle. Finally, there's some unique pieces of public art to see here as well, like the infamous automated peeing statues. Now, let's continue with another nice must-do around the Malastrana, and that's to check out Petrine Hill. Accessible either through a sweaty uphill climb or through a cute funicular. Crowning the scenic hill is Prague's own Eiffel Tower-esque structure, built in 1891. Today, you can actually climb or take an elevator up top for more sweeping views. Another spot to check out here is the infamous Magical Cavern, a former mill that has been converted into a spooky and mysterious art gallery populated with fantasy paintings. This dark cavern-like gallery is definitely a bit strange, but worth a look if you're searching for something a little different to do in Prague. Close to here are some other nice spots like the Strahov Monastery, which was founded in the 12th century and is today home to a beautiful library with rare manuscripts and frescoes, 
along with a nice brewery just outside where you can enjoy a beer to reward all your sightseeing efforts. It's worth noting at this point though that Prague is a city filled with amazing hills and therefore amazing views. So while this video covers some of the best known ones, be sure to check out some other lesser known spots too if your goal is to get off the beaten path. Again, I'll be pinning more options on my free map. One fun gem can be found at the NH Prague City Hotel, which has its own special free funicular access to the left of reception that takes you on a free ride up the hill to another one of its buildings. Though be sure to double check times because some busier time slots I've read are now reserved only for hotel guests. Another great place for views and sightseeing can be found further south over at Vishirad Castle. This castle is home to a number of nice sites, including great views of the river and landmarks like the Basilica of St. Peter and St. Paul, said to be home to a piece of St. Valentine's shoulder blade, as well as the very peaceful and very beautiful Vishirad Cemetery. For those interested in a more peaceful alternative to Prague Castle, I can definitely recommend this one. While a little bit outside of the central core, this castle complex is right by Prague's new town, which is also worth exploring, with some unique highlights including the iconic dancing house, which is just an office building, but a very fun photo op. There's also the famous 11 meter tall rotating head statue of Franz Kafka, made up of 42 mobile layers. Another highlight of new town is Wenceslas Square. To be honest, while this square has been the site of countless important moments in the city's history and is commonly named in travel guides as a must-see, today I don't really find it to be the most exciting place to visit as it mainly serves as a commercial hub. Still, it does have a very nice landmark to check out, which is the main building of the Czech National Museum, home to various displays about history and science, but also worth admiring from the outside. Another fun place right by here is the Palac Lucerna. This beautiful Art Nouveau shopping complex is a photogenic wonder to see on its own, but it also has some unique features, like a strange statue of St. Wenceslas riding what appears to be a dead upside down horse, supposedly commentary on the changing perception of history and legends in the modern Czech identity. It's also a fun place to sip on a beer. Another unique spot in this complex is the Paternoster lift that whisks you up to a very cool rooftop hangout spot, unique in that this lift has no doors and neither stops or slows down, making for a vaguely thrilling ride. Finally, my personal favorite place to see in Newtown and definitely an underrated Prague gem is the Jerusalem or Jubilee Synagogue. Known for its unique interiors that combine Art Nouveau and more styles for a gorgeous result. It also happens to be close to Prague's central train station, which is a mostly modern station hiding a very pretty Art Nouveau section that many visitors miss. So be sure to check it out if you're a nerd who loves old train stations like me. Now, speaking of being a nerd, the next must do is to just visit some unique museums. Prague is a treasure trove of interesting museums, some definitely more touristy than others, whether you're interested in art, history, miniatures, or even sexual gadgetry. Again, you can consult my map for a more comprehensive list of museums, but one of my personal favorite hidden gems can be found at the DOX Center for Contemporary Art. The Gulliver Airship is a steel and wood reading room perched on the top of this museum made to look like a 20th century airship that has crashed. You can of course explore the inside, which is open to visitors with plenty of space to sit, read and enjoy. There's also other cool contemporary art displays in the museum to see as well. But if you're less into museums and more into eating and drinking, it's worth noting that Prague's food and beer scene is pretty epic. So be sure to take advantage. In addition to hearty local fare like goulash and steak tartare, which can be found in traditional restaurants all over the city, Prague is a city with a lot of international options as well. If you're bad at decisions, Manifesto Market is a modern food market with options from around the world and a really cool vibe in general. All that said, Prague is home to many tourist trap restaurants, so be sure to always read reviews before you sit down. 
And on the beer front, Czech residents are very proud of the fact that they consume the most beer per capita of any country in the world, which means you should definitely be drinking some beer when in Prague. Now, this video has mainly covered sites in the touristic heart of Prague. But if time allows, there's definitely other neighborhoods to check out with a lot more to offer. Like in Zhishkov, for instance, a lively neighborhood home to the Zhishkov Tower, which is the highest building in the city, or the Holoshovice district, which is home to some very cool spots like the Unique and Alternative Cross Club, the DOX Center for Contemporary Art, as I previously mentioned, and Letna Park, commonly considered to be among the city's nicest green spaces with some of the best views in town. Honestly though, Prague can be a stressful city to visit if you're just darting from site to site. So for a final relaxing Prague activity, be sure to spend some time along the river whether with a sightseeing cruise or just going for a nice scenic walk. Carving out these little pockets of calm is key to making the most of your time in the city. All right, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out this link for a free map that pins all the activities mentioned in the video. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.